All right. Uh, today I would like to uh, steer your interest into some new development in instrumentation. Uh, in Institute Photonome, uh, we have found a way to uh, merge uh, typical in a solid state physics instrument, which is a certain probe for determination of work functions of materials, with electrochemical uh, setup that uh, many of you, uh, especially in uh, Jagiellonian University, are interested in. And uh, I would start uh, even earlier than, than my predecessor. Uh, I would go back to the 18th century. Uh, at the end of, of the century, uh, Volta discovered this strange phenomenon. Uh, when you have two pieces of metal, of the similar metals, here is a zinc and copper, and they are uncharged. Each of them is uncharged. Then you bring them into contact, pull them apart, and miraculously, the charge is there. Positive uh, on the zinc and negative on copper. On copper. And uh, so this is what you do. Uh, it turns out that th there is electric potential out of the sudden uh, developed between those two pieces. And this is not a small, uh, not a small potential. It is close to uh, uh, 700 millivolts. And at that time, uh, how Volta, uh, of, of course, he didn't know about volts at the, uh, back then, because this unit was introduced like 100 years later. And he couldn't explain uh, why this charge separation occurred. It was the advent of uh, quantum mechanics and uh, Dirac Fermi statistics that would uh, let us understand the reason for the uh, for, for this uh, phenomenon. And uh, for you familiar with uh, electrochemistry and for with uh, electrochemical cells, this is not this effect when you have a pile, electrochemical pile that generates some voltage. It is different effect here. You have neutral metals at the beginning, no electrolyte whatsoever. You touch them and separate them, and there is a charge <coughs> difference. And there is a voltage showing up. And uh, how this phenomenon comes about? It is a uh, pretty simple thing. Uh, if for contemporary uh, scientists, uh, the thing turns out to have a Fermi level or electrochemical potential, which is uh, higher up in energy scale than uh, the one for copper. And when they have, when the electrons uh, have chance to move between the two uh, solids, uh, they would move from the higher uh, Fermi level to the lower Fermi level, thus uh, the zinc would uh, charge positively and copper will uh, receive some electrons. Okay, uh, so this is uh, in electrical potential it looks like, like, like this, so there's a jump at the border uh, of the two, of the, at the interface of the two metals. By the way, this is not that simple picture as you may think. The greatest minds of the 19th century tried to explain, I mean, uh, tried to determine where, where this jump happens, whether it is at the interface of the two metals or whether it is on the interface or the surfaces between metal and the air around. Uh, because uh, <coughs> what is so... I need to pass this. Uh, Mind-boggling about this experiment. If you try to measure this potential difference once those two uh, 
bodies are connected, are in contact, then you get zero result. So this is a voltmeter. You just have one probe uh, uh, touching surface of the zinc and the other touching the surface of the copper piece. And it shows zero. Why? Because those two metals are already connected. So they are in equilibrium. Their Fermi levels are equalized already. Uh, then, and the voltmeter measures difference in Fermi levels, not in electric potentials. This might come as a surprise, because uh, when you are taught in, uh, when you are electronic technician or guys from classical electrostatics, uh, it is not obvious at all, because they do not consider Fermi levels. And those are minor details that are lost that due to quantum mechanics. You, you, you are not taught properly in schools that, that this is an important issue here. Another way you can try to, to do the measurement is to have those uh, probes hovering around uh, above the, the metals. But of course, now the circuit is open and you get zero again. So the voltmeter is not the best tool to determine this uh, potential difference, the CPD. By the way, the CPD is called also Volta uh, potential. And by definition, by UPAC, it is the potential above, just above the surface of one body uh, with respect to the potential uh, just above the su surface of the second body. So, in order to do a measurement, you have to get rid of voltmeters, and there's another tool for that. It is called Kelvin probe, and uh, invented uh, by, by Lord Kelvin uh, like 150 years ago. Uh, this is an example of such instruments that we are, uh, actually, this is uh, our uh, product. But uh, those instruments are used to determine where the Fermi level or the electrochemical potential of a substance is. And it has this nice feature that it does the measurement without perturbing the <coughs> surface much, because it is contactless measurement. So you, of course, there is a contact between, if, if this is a sample, there is a contact beneath going to the tip that is, uh, actually the tip is hidden behind this, this thing here. Uh, but the surface is free. And you don't need to have additional bonding contacts or, or whatever changing of surface to have the measurement. Because with uh, electrochemical cells, you would have to have two contacts. Here, it is enough to have just one contact and do the proper measurement. So people in uh, photocatalysis, uh, they used to, uh, they are used to, uh, to having those samples in electrolyte uh, and they have two contacts. One is on the back of the working electrode and the other is electrolyte. Here, with the usual uh, instrument, you just have, you, you have to have a dry uh, sample, okay? However, uh, it may come as no, no surprise that uh, submerging your sample in electrolyte changes its properties. And it would be nice to be able to do measurements like that when this uh, sample is in, in electrolyte. There are ways of dealing with that. You can, for example, uh, drop some electrolyte on the surface and uh, look for, for the properties of the CPDs or potential uh, Fermi level uh, positions. But perhaps we have come up with better solution. Uh, we call it electrochemical Kelvin probe. And uh, the major uh, piece is over here. This is a cuvette. Uh, it has a reference electrode uh, going from the side. And you put your sample on the top of this container where you can pour some electrolyte. <laughs> you may see uh, that this is an obvious solution, but uh, I tell you it's not. There were attempts in the past to prepare such a, such a device, and they were unable to measure CPD. 
Uh, and this, is, uh, this story is over 20 years old already. So, if we go to our uh, initial example, uh, when you put an electrolyte between those two uh, metals, now the potential will develop uh, between points uh, A and B. Sorry, uh, between points A and B, uh, you'll see this needle moving. Actually, this is. This should, I'm sorry. This should be a voltage here, uh, but uh, current will also flow. Unlike the situation when there was no electrolyte. When there was no electrolyte, no current will flow between points A and B. Here, uh, you, have, you may have uh, a chemical reaction that supports Fermi level difference between the, the two uh, metals. Uh, and this is why, uh, so, so you have electrochemical cell. Thus, uh, when we measure a CPD, uh, as usual with, with our sample here, it will be affected by this electromotive force generated by the electrochemical cell. So uh, you can also investigate, because of that, you can investigate that force. You can change the properties of your electrolyte, for example. Or you can uh, attack the problem with temperature and other things. Uh, so uh, this is not just a CPD measurement. As I mentioned before, uh, such systems have been developed uh, over 20 years ago, uh, but they have been of different design, and they would aim at surface photovoltaic. Uh, for those of you uh, uh, that may not be familiar with the term, it is every solid uh, that has a free surface uh, or the interface between the, the bulk of the solid and the vacuum or the air developed uh, special surface states uh, at its surface. Uh, and in case of uh, semiconductors, uh, those are very special uh, regions. They are called uh, space charged regions, and they are, and they are the reason why, uh, for example, TiO2 is uh, sensitive to light, or why semiconductors are sensitive to light, while metals are not. And uh, former attempts would have the sample at the bottom of the cuvette. They would get rid of this uh, reference electrode, uh, pour some electrolyte over the sample, and cover it with, uh, uh, with a piece of glass, with a microscopic uh, uh, window. And this was a good design just for surface photovoltaic uh, measurements. However, it was a disaster for, uh, for CPD. They would not be able to measure CPD. Uh, all right. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, with, uh, with this design, you can recover the full CPD. Uh, from this, you can have Fermi level position, electromagnetic force, if you are interested in the reaction going on in the cell. <coughs> And uh, surface photovoltaic is also available and work function of the, uh, of the materials. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much for a nice presentation of the, some of the kinds of the instrument you offer. Any questions? Well, I have a question. Certainly, <coughs> from CPD measurements, you can determine the work function, but not necessarily the Fermi level position because the work function is the Fermi level <coughs> plus at the surface potential, which you cannot subtract from, from this measure. Uh, all right. Uh, there are like 180 definitions of work functions. 
and <laughs> one of them is, 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 is different with word function is CPD. What, what, this is one of them. And no, no, no. CPD is a, the, the difference be, between the word function of the reference electrode and your cell. Uh, yes, this, this is this is what CPD one. definition. No, the word no, it, it's, it's not true. It's, it, it's incorrect. This is the the, the contact potential difference uh, definition. Agreed in the community. You are you have it backwards. Well, okay, this is volta potential difference. As I as I uh, shown it at the beginning. No, that is exactly what I said. No, <laughs> this is completely, this is backwards. Uh, the work function is more complex than CPD, way more complex, uh, especially because uh, you have the dipole layer uh, you can have on, on the surfaces that you measure the work function. Uh, I mean, the electrons that are moving through those surfaces will have additional work would need to be done uh, in order to, to cross a given uh, crystallographic side, I, I would say, or the dipole layer. Uh, however, uh, I don't want to go there to, into the work function because uh, uh, we have made some progress in theory of those as well, uh, and we'll be presenting in pretty soon. I would uh, invite you to, to, the, to the larger talks uh, sure. on, on the work function and CPD relations. Yeah, I, I have to probably interrupt at that moment and to say that I encourage you to make the discussion at least in some break or a little bit later on. And we have moved to the moment when we have to thank the speaker again. Thank you.